Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. One of the most popular videos on the internet to react to is Disturb's cover of The Sound of Silence. And for a good reason, the emotional pull is epic. Tons of other people have covered that song, but Jeff Casalucci is one of my favorite voices to analyze. And when I heard that he was making his version of The Sound of Silence, I knew instantly that I would want to check it out. So let's get to it. Oh. My old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left its seat while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains so many fascinating elements that Jeff added to this. First, I like the way he's really kept it fairly transparent. I think that this opening line, it, it has so much packed into the lyrics. We need lyrics. We need those lyrics to come through. It doesn't need to be overcomposed. But what he's done is he's added all of these subtleties that essentially add texture to what we're experiencing. I'm a sucker for piano, just like fully admit it. I love the reverb on this one. Okay, so that sort of bassy note that shakes in, I don't think that's Jeff's voice. I think it's just a, probably something in a DAW. And it has a rumble to it, which makes it feel like it's an epic sound immediately, that there's a lot of gravity to the situation. It contrasts the piano very well. Oh, there's even a little bit of high sound that comes in there. Oh. Interesting. So that, that boom and the bottom comes in and then there's there was a little bit of static that time. And the first time there's even like a little almost creaking noise that was coming in. So it almost feels like there's a door that's opening and shutting with ambiance. It also feels to me like a beginning of a film trailer for some sort of end of the world movie. I'll go back just to, again. Notice, notice the way it's opening and closing. It's fascinating. Wow. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left its seat while I was sleeping And the mm. vision that was planted in my brain Still remains within the sun so cool to drop it. One of the things you'll notice as Jeff sang this entire first part is his mouth doesn't open very much. And I gotta say, Jeff has really awesome videos online about how to sing low. And it's important to know too, this is what works for Jeff. Some people like to open their mouth a lot when they're singing low. But he's not actually making that much sound. 
He's really good at singing close to his mouth for those, uh, close to his mic for those low notes. And also, if you look at basses often in acapella groups, those low notes, you want them to feel really, really boomy, but they're not necessarily full of volume. The vocal folds, when you're singing a really low note, they're opening a lot. Um, remember, vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka. When you sing a note, they vibrate, right? And the lower you go down, the slower the vocal folds vibrate. So if they're going like this, that's like really slowed down because they're vibrating faster than we can usually just see with the naked eye. But just imagine it's going slower as it's going lower and the air has more time to exit through. Now, combine that with this idea that more breath pressure underneath is going to equal a louder dynamic, but that breath pressure is just going whoosh, straight through. So you can do things to affect that, but is a super, super low note naturally going to be really loud? Not very often. Some people will have more natural capability for loudness than others, but... Jeff is keeping that mouth really, really tiny, and he's actually leaning into this sort of intimacy of those low notes there. I think it's very, very good for low singers to note and really listen to what he has to say about how to make these sounds. I've Go back a little further. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Leans on the I've in a come ton. To talk with you again because a vision softly creeping left its seat while I was sleeping. And the love that extra sound in there that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound. Silence. We're going to go back one more time. Notice the way that it doesn't feel like there's a ton of repetition in the things he's done. And that's one of the reasons I think this intro is so fascinating. He's, it's like elements of different things are sort of being brought and drawn together. Um, but it's not like we're getting them already looped through. I feel like it's almost casting a net right now. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to So cool. Nothing else again. other than his voice right there, right? Because a vision softly creeping. So much ambiance and shift in it. In the vision that was planted in my brain still remains. That little loop in the piano is the only thing I really have heard developed so far. Oh, that's cool how he drops that note. I really like it. Dreams I walked alone, narrow streets of cobblestone. <laughs> so rumbly. <laughs> I turned my color to the cold and damp when my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light. Split the the sound of Wow. Wow. Did you hear the reverb change on the ends of that last note? It like it took everything and it feels like it stretched the sound out wider. Sort of playing with the idea of silence, which I very much would hope that anybody who covers this song would play with the sound of silence. Please, please, please. Uh, also, it's so fascinating to me. Disturbed's version of this is hugely popular. So many people think that it's by Disturbed at this point when it's actually by Simon and Garfunkel. And I knew the original version and it's been amazing to hear how that has morphed. This is such a different kind of morphing. 
I thought I was going to get tons and tons of Jeff layered on top of himself. Maybe he'll do that later. I don't know. He's very, very good at that. But I like the way this is showing off some of his other arrangement skills. He's the same way that he plays with his voices layered on top of each other. He's playing with textures layered on top of each other here. It's so cool to hear the ambience in and out and in and out. I feel that that is one of the ways that he's playing with silence, the way that we hear stuff around us every day that makes it so we're very, very rarely actually dwelling in silence. <sighs> so it's fascinating to me. Okay, we're going to go back to the source. In restless dreams I walked alone. It feels progressive. Narrow streets of cobblestone. Neath the halo of a street lamp. I turned my collar to the cold and damp. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light. Look at that neon light flashing. This sort of like, it's not neon, it's neon pink purple that's flashing as you talked about the neon light there in the lyrics. Notice there are moments when Jeff is really just singing through his nose, like stone, he's gone to an in there. The in means that the tongue is connected to the roof of the mouth and it is blocking sound from exiting through the mouth. So the sound actually has to go through your nose or rather I should say your air has to exit through your nose. If your air doesn't have a place to exit, you can't keep singing. That's just a rule of phonation. So that airflow is going entirely through his nose, yet there's still a roundness to the sound and a depth to it. That's because of the way he's shaping his vocal tract back here. There's still a lot of bassiness. Of course, his vocal folds are very much bass vocal folds. And there's just a lot of space that's able to help that sound resonate uh, probably fairly naturally in his body. And then that exits through the nose and gets this focus on the sound. I'm going to go back to that part. Dreams I walked alone. That had the same thing. Right. If you just listen to the in on cobbled stone, it, it sounds round and full. Not just like a little tiny thing coming through a nose, not like a mosquito. Girl streets of cobblestone, the, halo of a street lamp. <sighs> the ambiance is so cool. To the cold and damp. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light, split the night. And touch the sound of silence. And in the naked light I saw ten thousand people, maybe more. People talking without speaking. People hearing without listening. People writing. That took my breath away. <laughs> I, I can just over and over, I feel like he's playing with this idea of uh, what is silence? When, when you actually take all of the sound away, how often does that happen? That this song is also just talking about the ability to speak up in different instances. There's lots of things that the sound of silence is discussing. It's so cool how... We hear him bring in the extra voices, I think a Jeff chorus, if you will, in different areas here, but again, fading in and out, very similar to how he was doing that with the ambiance before. Um, then that run at the end, the way he went from high down to low, really just crossing through a huge range, but doing it in such a subtle kind of way. Jeff has low notes galore at the wazoo. He also has high notes. 
but he doesn't actually show anything off really blatantly. Yeah, there are moments, especially with voice play, where he'll he'll show a thing off like Okie Boogie was really cool at the very end of that. But I think it, it's just it shows so much of his artistry to hear how he's been finding more and more ways to incorporate his entire range without necessarily feeling like he's trying to make fireworks happen every time. That like the way he went up there and just drew us more into this word listening and how when we listen more, we can actually hear more things going on. It's, it's so cool to hear just that creative statement with that one word and the pitches he drew out of it. Talking without speaking, people hearing without listening, people writing songs that voices. Interesting, again, the way he took the voices out and no one shared because the voices weren't sharing with him in that moment. There's such a really cool theme that he's built up of having silence or no silence. People writing songs that voices never shared. No one dare <laughs> disturb the sound. Listen to that run down again. I love the additional sounds coming in here too. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, this feels like it's like set in space and mixing with your, or messing with your feeling of time sense. Um, there's a movie about that. Uh, and I, I feel like it's calling back to that soundtrack. I can't remember the name of it, but Right, it, there's a certain sense that we're in this black space, just kind of floating. Of Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Wow. The chords, the voices are making the harmonies there. They're so unusual, so jazzy. It feels like cluster jazzy. That's normal till here, but that that's really low. Wow, so colorful in that chord choice. Oh my gosh. Uh, I feel like uh, we just got some chords from Debussy right there. It's shocking. But my words like silence. Yeah, it's definitely WC to me. So you have like the WC brings in lots of elements of jazz into his writing as well. And then uh, it, you tend to have these parallel chords that are moving up and down. So it's a classical feeling, but you've brought it into jazz. It feels very impressionistic overall. Uh, words like Wow, I mentioned 
mentioned earlier that this feels really progressive to me. And so interesting hearing, hearing Jeff's compositional style evolve and hearing the way that this is bringing so many new elements and I don't feel tons of repetitiveness. There are certain, certain things that will be repetitive, but the way that he turned this corner into this impressionistic moment was so surprising. It caught me off guard. It had a huge emotional impact as well. I'm going to go back because there were some other things before that that were incredible, but I, I just had to understand that moment better. Okay, let's go back a little bit to here. Yeah, there we go. That's There's the like dark space feeling. Again, all closed mouth, all through the nose. Fools that I do not know. Love the build here. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. So cool how there was a rise essentially with like a probably with some mouth percussion there. Might have been a different, like a synth sound. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words. That here you go. And the way that you go to hear my words there, you have that rise. And then when it essentially, as it reaches the end there, it shuts off a bunch of that sound again for hear my words. And as the extra sounds are shut off, we're able to hone in on those words more. It's really low. That's <laughs> well, how low is that? Arms that I might reach you. Oh my gosh, this would be flat, dude. Dude, that's so low. Wow. Take my arms that I might reach you. But my so stupid low. It's amazing how that shock of low got lost on the chord structure right afterwards. He has so many good things that are put next to each other. It's just delightful layers. Take my arms that I might reach you. But wow. They were getting so much of his high range here. Like, keep in mind, like Jeff is one of the lowest professional singers out there right now. He's got so many low notes. But this section is all about the highs. It's all about the highs. Wow. So I know in there, in the backing vocals, at one point that Jeff goes up to high C, which is 
super incredible. Again, talking about this really, really low voiced guy who just has so many high notes available. And that's also, I was a very full high C in there in the backing as well. That's incredible. He is able to do so much with his voice. And yet we have this sophisticated cover that's going on. That's really drawing our attention to what silence sounds like throughout the whole thing. I'm going to go back in that section again. Listen to those backing vocals. Right up there. I also love the way he layered in the low bass there to give it like a rumble at one point, even though we're mostly focused on the way he's weaving highs here. There's still this texture that he's bringing in from the rumbly, rumbly lows. Right there. <laughs> wow. I love how this version is so different from the main two that I know and adore, but I also love this one because it's making me contemplate those lyrics again in a new light. I really think that Jeff is showing so much sophistication and growth in the way that he's composing and shifting so many elements around in this song. It's fascinating to get to hear his musical journey. It just, it's totally wonderful. And I have to say, I love being a part of his Patreon where I can hear even more about that. So to all of you out there who are a huge fan of Jeff, he does have a really awesome Patreon. You should check it out. And if you would like to hear some more analysis of Jeff's voice, both as himself and with a voice play, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.